this is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, we delve into the intriguing trend that we have observed, and we're going to show it to you, of governments gone by and present commissioning projects just weeks before elections. Does it affect or impact the fortunes of the governments in the elections positively? Now, we have, we have a conversation and analysis of this here on Ghana Tonight. And in fact, a number of you will put a question on our X page and also on Facebook. A number of you have been also contributing to this. And as always, check it out two hours before the show starts at 10 p.m. We engage you, the members of the general public, on the issues we're going to be talking about here on Ghana Tonight. So you have a say in what we say as well. But the phenomenon of government's commissioning projects just weeks before elections has sparked intense debate with many questioning the motivations behind these last-minute initiatives. Now, for instance, there have been concerns about the timing of infrastructure projects and their potential, as it were, impact or, as it were, the effect on voting decisions over the period. But is this trend merely a coincidence or is a calculated move to influence the electorate to positively respond to the fortunes of government when some of these last-minute projects are, uh, as it were, commissioned. But we, we shall soon engage experts on the implications of these last-minute projects and whether indeed they truly benefit the government politically or the communities or they merely serve as a political gimmick. First, just wanted you to hear what earlier today happened. The, the president commissioned a school, a public school here in Osu. The education minister, Dr. Yosef Duchum, was there as well. He gave indication of what's going to be happening in the coming weeks when it comes to commissioning projects in the education sector. Take a look. Touted the massive gains chalked in the educational sector under his tenure. Yes. Transformation yes. has begun. Our public schools will forever be transformed. Yes. Osu has gotten their share. A number of communities around the country are getting their share. There is a new dawn for socio-economic transformation yes. through education. Yes. It has begun in Osu. Yes. It will travel around the country. Yes. We have a country to build, and that country is Ghana. Well, so you, you hear the education minister give indication of this, the project you just saw, the, the business school in Osu that was commissioned earlier today, is going to be witnessed. A similar incident is going to be witnessed across the country of commissioning of projects just ahead of the elections. But this is your election command center. This is what the education minister was talking about, this. And I'm sure a number of you may have seen it already on published on social media. This particular flyer has been making the rounds, indicating that historic commissioning of 80 educational projects, 80 educational projects beginning today. And that's the first one you saw there in Osu. And between now and the election, they, we understand this is what's going to be happening. Uh, this was put out by the Education Ministry, the witnessing of education transformation in action. Historic commissioning of 80 educational projects, right? And this, this is not the only project in this sector that we've seen some commissioning taking place. At least yesterday, we also did, two days ago, we saw what happened at the flower pot on the... Springtex Road, the commissioning of that interchange at the flower pot on the Springtex Road. Imano Somani has been interacting with some of the people there. We'll hear from them shortly, but this is it. A number of you also have been reacting to what the Greater Crow Region Minister Titus Glover was captured on video doing uh, with respect to uh, a, a hawker who had set up her table there, and that table was destroyed. Apart from that flower pot commissioning, we also saw on that same day President Kofuado commissioning the 200 megawatts bridge power station that was inaugurated by him on Tuesday, the 19th of November, 2024, right? So the fundamental question that a number of you have been asking is whether these, what has been described as last minute projects, influences voter decisions positively for a government. Guess what? There's a precedence that we're looking at. Let's go to 2016. We saw a number of projects inaugurated or commissioned by the then president, John Dramani Mahama, some few weeks to election 2016. Well, it did not lead to the, the voters smiling at him 
at that election. He lost that election in 2016 with that historic margin. But take a look at this. On October 16, 2016, the Pando Water Project was commissioned. November 14, 2016, the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange was commissioned. We call it the, the Circle Dubai. You remember that? November 16, 2016, the Trust Port Emporium was commissioned. November 25, 2016, we saw the Western Railway projects, the construction of stations in Sekunde, Kojokrum, and Takrade. And then also the 28th of November 2016, the Elmina Fishing Processing Factory was also commissioned in the run-up to the elections as early as November 28th. In fact, we saw some projects being commissioned in December, just a few days to the 7th of December 2016. All of that we saw it. That election, the NDC lost. John Mahama lost that election in 2016. Well, we make reference to this precedence, but would this be different this time around? Would it influence these last minute projects positively for this government? Or we will see this precedent repeating itself? That's the conversation we're having tonight. A number of you have been commenting on it. Professor Kobe Mensa is joining us right now. He's a political marketing strategist because this is a matter of marketing the the uh, uh, political party going into the elections. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First off, from your own reading and how things are playing out right now, Professor Kobe Mensah, taking into consideration what I just referenced in 2016, it appears that this modus operandi continues where we see these last minute projects ahead of elections being commissioned. Well, Alfred, as, as you pointed out, you know, over the years, we've seen the political parties, uh, I mean, the political parties in government, you know, continue to do this last minute project. I call it speed dating, uh, hoping that, you know, we would immediately remember, or obviously it is real time. And so we could actually put our electoral decisions on those, I suppose, you know, in their minds, uh, the effect of the project that they do on our electoral decisions fades over the period uh, when they do it early. As a result, they want to take advantage of what we mean by recency. That, or they are in real time leaving the experiences of the project that they do. But I suppose it's a very wrong approach because the voter come to the decision over a long period of time, you know, accumulating things that they have actually gone through, you know, over the period, and as a result, make a decision. The political parties themselves, you hear them say, well, by this time, voters have made their, their minds already. If that's the case, why do you then wait until the D-Day before you start launching projects? I think that they've got a methodology wrong uh, because people don't vote according to your last minute project. And let me give you a typical example. If, for example, someone had issues, health issues that had been deteriorating over the period, by you putting up a health facility at the tail end of the electoral map, wouldn't actually immediately you know, respond to the health needs of the person. This individual, because they have had deteriorating health problems, certainly is going to vote against you. It's not going to be like because you put up a health post right, you know, uh, before the elections. If someone had lost their loved ones, you know, before that health post was put up, certainly they're not going to actually forgive you because they've just seen you spring. Mm. They've right. been uh, disrespected because obviously they don't have jobs. They've lost hope. Your last minute creation of jobs wouldn't let a person resent their decision mm. of your bad governance. Because obviously, if you don't take the right decisions, if you're not well organized, it doesn't matter what you have done in, uh, to the tail end of it. You are definitely a bad government. Right. And so I think that the last minute project that they spring up leading to elections are not helping. They probably might think of taking advantage of recency 
but I think it's the best strategy. You talk about the concept of recency and, and that um, to, quick recall um, going into the elections, and that's why you would have them push some of these projects into the last minute um, days ahead of the election. But in this particular case, this is what Kojo Pankroma is quoted to have indicated when he granted that uh, interview to, to, to CTFM. He indicated that, quote, the commissions are part of a bigger track record, Professor Kobmesa. If your track record on infrastructure speaks well for you, then the commissioning will just help with the icing on the cake. If your track record on infrastructure does not speak well for you, then it will be an exercise in futility. As a Minister for Works and Housing, he says it is not the case that these are the only schools they are built since 2017, talking about these over 80, uh, there's 80 schools to be commissioned. In his constituency, he sees school blocks, dormitories, and so on. So the people have seen what has been done over the years, and now they are seeing what is going on in the final stretch. And that it is not about what you do in the last two or three weeks. It is about what you have done over the period for the public to access and also make a determination. So essentially, he's talking about a track record, Professor Comenza. Fred, I'm afraid, what does track record mean? It means that you've done something before and there's evidence that we could actually pinpoint a certain trend. Now, what are the track records? If they are talking about, as an MPP, in terms of maybe former President Kufour's era, etc., clearly, the old man just pointed out that there were quite a number of projects that were uncompleted, that are still uncompleted. The last time he spoke, you know, you remember, he spoke about how sad he is because of a number of uncompleted projects. Ex-President Mahama had actually spoken about projects that haven't been completed, and as a result, when he comes to power, he's going to actually complete them. What is the track record that they're talking about? We don't see any track record. What we see is that a government had deliberately backloaded or backloaded what they think are infrastructure projects that could actually facilitate them win elections. And if you listen to the rhetoric they've been, they've been putting across, vote for us so that we can complete the Takradi Central Market. If you vote for Baumia, then you can complete the Takradi flyover. That actually telling us that it is a deliberate attempt to squeeze people in order that they would give it their vote. That is irresponsible. That is unethical. And that is sheer wickedness. And the voters would never forgive them for doing that if that is their strategy. Just because you do not want to complete a project because... But, 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 but you concede, Professor Gomez, that this, this strategy, as I made reference to it, has not been employed by just this administration as well. There's, there's some precedent to it, albeit the fact that it did not work for John Mahama in 2016. He lost that election. Of course, Alfred, and that's what I told you. Consistently, political parties have thought that it is something that they could use to actually crowd out the voters and let them vote for them. It hadn't worked. And I'm sure that Mahama had actually le learned his lessons and that's why he keeps saying he will come and complete those uncompleted buildings. I'm sure that when MPP is voted out, they would also learn the lessons. That is, if we get Mahama come to deliver on what he's saying, perhaps in future, when MPP is also voted back in, they will learn lessons. It is about time we tell the politicians that you cannot toy with our livelihoods. You cannot toy with our dignity. You might want to look at it as a political strategy, that you're toying with. Uh, well, well, but Prof, I'm losing you a bit, but maybe quickly before I let you go. I mean, all of this uh, you know, projections that you're putting out and all postulating that it, it may happen because then citizens would not necessarily take into consideration what has been described of these last minute projects to, to decide on who to vote for. But that projection is hinged primarily on the, the voter, the Ghanaian voter, being discerning or having matured to the point where 
they can see through what you are saying that indeed we're seeing all of these last minute projects so called and we're not going to allow that influence our decision to vote. Do you think the Ghanaian electorate or the Ghanaian voter has gotten to that point of maturity? Of course, what happened to Mahama 2016? After launching all those projects, they were kicked out. Certainly it's going to happen. It's going to repeat. Yesterday I was, a, I was in a program. I told people, if you want to analyze this particular elections, you do not analyze it as the trend analysis from 2020, but you look at 2000, 2000 and uh, what do you call eight and 2016. The mood of the people in these elections can tell you exactly the mood of the people now. It is not about the trends. It is about the mood that you want to gauge. If people voted out with soundly Mahama in 2016 because they voted at the tail end and started commissioning projects, they're going to do the same thing against the MPP. Appreciate your time. And look, we're just some... 16 days away from Election Day, December 7. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Professor Kobe Mensah is a political marketing strategist. is a lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School as well. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And this is your Election Command Center. The countdown continues 16 days to the D-Day, December 7, 2024. As always, we say that you have a say in what we say, and there are many ways to connect with us. If you go on our X page right now, and this is it, we're going to put it on the screen right now. That's the conversation going on. The question that we put out earlier today on our X page here on TV3 Ghana, the question is, will the last-minute projects being commissioned by government influence your choice of voting? 7% of you say yes. 91% of you say no. Well, 2% of you say maybe, maybe it, it's going to influence your decision on who to go vote for. But, but the verdict is out there. That's what you see. It's always a reflection of the sentiments of people. And it, the conversation continues on social media, on X, on 3 News GH, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, and also on X. And let's get talking. Also on 3FM927 as well. Let's hear your voice. And this is where it leads us to the voice of the people, as we always call the People's Voice segment. My colleague Imano Sumani has been interacting with uh, some of the uh, hawkers who were plying their trade around the, that's the uh, Spring Tex Road flower pot area. Now, after the commissioning, we've seen this viral video of the Greater Accra Regional Minister you know, storming the place, destroying the, the table that belonged to one of the hawkers who was doing business there. Even after the commissioning, there's been some varied reactions to it. But this is what they've been talking about. Samani. Well, good evening, Alfred, from the latest interchange in the crowd. I'm talking about the flower pot interchange, as you can see behind me. Beautiful, beautiful edifice. However, construction is still going on at certain sites of the interchange. But... Tonight on The People's Voice with me, Imano Somani, the bone of contention is the treatment of hawkers that used to trade around the interchange area, particularly the action of the Great Accra Regional Minister, Titus Glover, uh, him, you know, basically sacking the, the hawkers from the vicinity. And we're here tonight to find out if indeed that's the way to go. Should we enforce the laws to ensure that hawkers are not around here or should we find a place for them let's get some thoughts on this from the people themselves so let's let's get talking mommy good evening you're live on ghana tonight the original minister you know uh asked a lot of you guys to leave the vicinity of the interchange where are you gonna go and do you think you'll get other places to to, to trade we don't have anywhere to go we have children so we are appealing the government the leaders that they should look at us Please, we beg them. They should help us to find a small place for us. Because we have children who are in school. How can we take care of them? We beg. We beg them, oh, please. We beg them. They should help us and find somewhere for us. All right, let's, let's get some, some more thoughts. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, uh, the regional minister, you know, asked some people to leave, particularly that coconut seller. What do you think? 
oh, well, please, it is not fine. Me, my suggestion is that, uh, like, they should give us more place to sell because we don't have any place to go. And the only thing wonder me, Chinese, they give them place to sell. What about we Ghanaians there here? We don't have place to sell. And the money that we are using to sell, we, we bought loan. It's loan that we are using to sell. So, please, they should co consider us. All right. Let's get some more thoughts on this, uh, Chief. So a lot of people were asked to, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry, open smack at you, open smack at you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were asked to, you know, the hawkers were asked to move. What do you think? Uh, I had a hard journey more. Because I did not know how to do it. I had a hard journey more. And then, like, there's some... I had a hard journey more. I had a hard journey more. I had a hard journey more. Okay, I'm going to say so many people are here. I'm going to be here overhead and I say, oh, so many people are here and I say, oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here and 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 I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here and 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 I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here and 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 I'm going and to back us as a monocre a higher and to chop an air and air power mucho. So my head and be a net that I know, or move him over an air and as I'm quite now hobby. Now I'm trying to power more because in your son had a more can answer no matter what you know. I did a bar and see a slow mo. All right, a slow mo. All right, so basically he's right. So basically he's just uh, asking. That government gives them a place where they can uh, you know, indulge in their trade activities because they have no source of livelihoods. And those are the thoughts of the people here around the Flowerpot Interchange. Back to you in the studio, Alfred. Mano Somani, thank you very much. As always, this is the People's Voice segment, and you have a say in what we say here on Ghana tonight, here on your election command center, 16 days away from election day, December 7.